pleasure to be in the room with so many people who have dedication and vision and, and who are representing so many of our students who are going to shape the future. So I thank Intel and all of the partners who are bringing us into the 21st century in the most beautiful <coughs> ways. One question, um, I wear a couple of hats and I work um, uh, to weave together um, government, and private sector, education, community-based groups. And for many years, I've served Congress people as staff, advisor, special advisor, 10 years with Major Owens, and, and now two years with Diane Watson from California, who serves on the Foreign Affairs Committee and has a passion for education and STEM education and youth as ambassadors in the global age. Now, my question, and is how are you involving your congressional leaders and your government leaders, your local, your state, and your government leaders? Because we really do need to leverage all our efforts and to educate the different stakeholders for this 21st century. And we're so fortunate to have a, a, a president who understands the importance of STEM education as well as the global community. And so I'm interested to know what you're doing we're, and we're then we on the Hill can make, you know, can help you. Thank you. Yes. Well, uh, thank you. We, two years ago, we started the uh, Student Committee for IMSA Advancement. And, and we literally uh, take this group of students who come to us every year, what can we do in Springfield, what can we do with, do with our congressional representatives. We, we take students down to Springfield, our state capital, and literally walk the halls, knock on doors. We're a state uh, school or state agency, and so it's important to bring students uh, from across the state to, to meet their state senators, representatives. 80% um, of our funding comes from the state of Illinois. And they uh, last year were actually asked to testify at the House Appropriations Committee. Uh, we find ways to bring legislators on campus for special events. Last year, uh, we had one on energy, so we had our, our state reps and senators talk about their energy legislation. We're also here, our students present their research on energy, and it, it was quite a day. And most recently on 9-11, now that uh, President Obama uh, declared 9-11 as, as being a day of service, we honored uh, legislators and veterans who have uh, served uh, America and served Illinois. Congressman Foster was our keynote speaker, so he was, uh, and he came, he, at first he sent a video, and we said, well, thanks, Congressman. Uh, maybe we'll use that better state. He says, you know, I'll find a way to be out there. So uh, he came out himself, and we had, I think, eight or nine state legislators up, everybody from Mary Flowers, south side of Chicago, Rockham, Sockham, Democrat to Chris Lawson, probably the most uh, financially conservative Republican state senator in Illinois. I'll, I'll share the podium. It was a tremendous day. But what well, we have to do it. Our, our livelihood depends on that. And it's uh, been a very successful strategy. I want to uh, interrupt just briefly and introduce Congressman Serrano from New York, who has joined us, and offer you the opportunity if you'd like to close a question or say hello. Sure. Not a custom as I have to public. Put you on the spot and you okay. First of all, I apologize for being late, and I apologize for leaving early. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus is having its annual event. The theme this afternoon is education. Right. So I have to go back to the <clears throat> convention center. My congratulations to all of you. I've said this for many years, and I believe it, that there is no greater profession or noble profession than to teach. Uh, and teaching takes different ways, different approaches, and what you do is, is the best. And, and I know what I'm talking about because in my other life, in the New York State Assembly, I was chairman of the Education Committee, the vice chairman of the Higher Ed Committee. Then I decided to get this job. And so, unlike other folks that you spoke about, which really does worry me, who say, well, I was never good at math or science. I love science, and I was pretty good at math. <laughs> and now I really have to be good at math, because I am chairman of the financial services of the Appropriations Committee. <laughs> it's about $60 billion, you know, give or take a few pennies. And so, numbers come in handy, and, and the numbers, uh, when attached to, to policy, to public policy, do have meaning. And so, it is important. Now, I keep gesturing with this hand. You're wondering what happened to me. A politician who can't shake with a right hand is a bad, bad sign. <laughs> what happened is that at my age, 
I still decided to play basketball in Orchard Beach in the Bronx. And I took the ball like this. And I didn't know that a finger could move in so many different ways. <laughs> so I just came from a little therapy where they're doing that. It's very painful. I think the therapist was a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> he inflicted pay me on it. I really believe that there is a commitment here in this Congress, both houses and in the White House, to continue forward on improving educational opportunities in this country. Our greater problem may be that there's still in the communities out there a lack of uh, cohesion as to what education should be. While you do what you do, there are some who suggest you don't teach certain things because they go beyond what you're supposed to teach. And I always am careful that events like this never to be political, and so I don't think this is a political statement, but I wish a president would have spoken to me when I was in school, and so why some people got upset about a president speaking to children is beyond me. So as we work to help our local districts, our local districts have a lot of work to do in trying to get folks to get off this political nonsense about what's teachable, what is not. The idea is to teach everything and then let people decide for themselves. But what you do is noble, what you do is, is, is great. And I just want to take a special moment to uh, congratulate the Urban Assembly for Applied Maths and Science. Happened to be housed within the 16th Congressional District. <laughs> Let me tell you something about the 16th Congressional District, which is important for educators to know because it is part of who we are as a country. It is the poorest congressional district in the nation, located within the richest city on earth, within walking distance from the wealthiest congressional district in the nation, which is the east side of Manhattan. And it's not a badge of honor. I accept that that's where I've been all my life, where I grew up since coming from Puerto Rico. But it's hard to understand how that can happen. The second poorest district in the nation is in Kentucky, in a rural area, represented by a Republican a friend of mine. Nothing, very little in common, except that that poverty that hits everyone. And so the challenges are many. I know I've rambled on and my finger is hurting, but I <laughs> congratulate you a lot. Uh, and, I, and I tell you that you are in the front lines doing what needs to be done. And folks like you in your school make it easier for me to come to Washington four or five days a week because I can brag as I will when I get back to the other education events. So congratulations and thank you for the opportunity.